Hey ho and heidi ho boys and girls. Today on your edition of What in the Heck Am I Doing? We are going to do the Hogwarts letter zip bag. The 5x7 bag was released last week. This week I'm hoping to get the 6x10, 7x11, and 8x12 out. No, there will not be a 4x4. Sorry guys. Um, on this bag, you actually have in your zip file two files. There is the zip bag proper, yada, 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 because I always print my stip sheets before I begin, and there's an optional back, okay? The optional back has, in lettering, Mr. Harry Potter, covered under the stairs, for Privet Drive, Little Winning Surrey. So, in order to do this bag, we're going to do this pattern first. You'll notice that I have got only two color changes. The first one is a die line to show you where to put your vinyl. And the second one is the lettering. So like every In The Hoop project, we start, ooh, I need to raise the camera up. Um, we start by hooping some medium weight cutaway. I'm gonna go ahead and run the die line and I'll show it to you in just a minute. Okay folks, so we have run our die line for the six by 10 Hogwarts letter bag. And you'll notice that it's about six inches by eight and a half inches. So I have cut my vinyl to uh, nine and a half by seven because I like a little bit of leeway. I'm going to visually center it. If you are anal retentive, you can break out your grids and mark the center of everything. Also, um, you can secure it with some little tapes at the four corners or you can use some basting spray or you can just float it with nothing. It's not like we're uh, embroidering in a Cat 5 hurricane or you're expecting an earthquake or you know, you've taken up residence on the deck of the Titanic. We're gonna throw this back in the machine. We are going to run our lettering and then our back of the Harry Potter's letter bag will be complete and you can set this aside to do the front. Back in a few. Okay, so we have finished up the back panel for the Harry Potter Hogwarts letter um, zip bag. Uh, if your machine does not trim jumps, you want to trim your jumps right here and right now. All right, and then we're gonna unhoop this. We don't cut it down, uh, we don't trim it, except to get rid of the excess stabilizer, okay? The only thing that you're going to, don't cut your vinyl, don't trim your vinyl, the only thing you want to trim and get rid of is all of this excess and extra stabilizer. Okay, so carefully trim out all this extra stabilizer. All right, there you go. Now your back panel is ready to go when we finish the rest of the front. And to start the rest of the front, once again, folks, just like Every in the hoop project, you know, you're gonna hoop, hoop some middle, uh, medium weight cutaway. Back in a minute. So, we've finished the back of our Hogwarts letter bag. There she is. We did not do any trimming except to the applique. This is for the 6x10 bag. I always print my color stitch sheets and I try to, try to take a look at what I'm gonna be doing because you know, as designers and digitizers, we throw in a lot of random colors for in the hoop stuff. So what I'm gonna let you know right now is that these two are the tack down for the um, FOE or gross grain ribbon for either a side tag or if you wanna do a crossbody, you're gonna have the option to put in two um, D-rings up here. These two right here are going to tack down your zipper, and since I'm using beige vinyl, I'm going to be using beige um, zipper. So I want to use beige thread there. These two, it's irrelevant, but I'm going to be using brown so you can see it. This mahogany, this brown, this black, this light red, and this dark red are the only true colors in this pattern. So follow Steps five, six, seven, and eight exactly. Nine is going to be attaching your felt, so you wanna do that in beige. And actually, ladies and gentlemen, pretty much everything from step nine to 12 is gonna be beige so it doesn't show on your beige vinyl. 
And remember, I throw in that step, that last step, and this one is a 13, as a dead stop to force your needle to come over here and stop rather than coming across the body of the bag so that your needle head does not get hung up. So in this pattern, we will not be sewing 13. I am, however, going to go run step one and then show you how to attach your D-rings and your FOE or ribbon. Back in a minute. And we're back for the 6x10 Hogwarts zip, uh, Hogwarts letter zip bag. Okay, so I've run color stop one and it's giving me dye lines. I can either set this up so that it has a lobster claw or D-ring coming off the side, or I've got dye lines to do D-rings at the top so that you can finish it as a crossbody bag. I'm gonna go ahead and make this one a crossbody. So what you do is you take about three inches of cross grain ribbon, you fish it through, uh-huh. Now again, this is where everybody grumbles about my tape addiction, but trust me, it works. You take a couple little pieces of tape, you even up these two ends, you center your cross grain ribbon across your die line. All right. I use the top, the hoop for accurate measurements. I'm gonna have a, just a little more than a half of an inch hanging down, but we'll be fine because I want to use the top of this to make sure that other D-ring is exactly the same distance from the stitch line. I'm gonna tape that bad boy down because I don't like metal flopping around around my needle. That's just a prescription for disaster. And now I'm gonna come over here I'm gonna take my D-ring, gonna take my, my ribbon, fish it through. Do, 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 do. Gonna slide this down so I can work. Ha -ha. Gonna buck that D-ring right up against the hoop. That's gonna give me about the same amount of spacing as the other one. I'm gonna put down my tape down here. I'm gonna put down my tape right here to make sure my D-ring doesn't flop around. I'm gonna go throw it back in the machine and it's going to tack those down and then it's going to give me a um, die line for vinyl placement. So back in a minute. Okay, hello my lovelies. We have just run color stop number two for the Hogwarts letter zip bag. You'll notice it has tacked down our grass grain and given us a die line for the rest of the bag. Now we are going to attach our zipper. But before we do that, I am going to trim a little bit of this. Our zipper is going to go right here, and we don't want this ribbon hanging down into our zipper path once the bag is done. And before you guys go panicking, going, oh, those are going to rip right out, remember, we're also going to be doing stitch lines across here to attach vinyl and then to attach it to the back. So these ribbons will get sewed across a couple of times. Now, the length of this bag, I'm sorry, not length, width of this bag, and I can't find my tape measure, so we'll use this, is eight and a half inches give or take. So you are going to need at least a nine inch ribbon. I'm using a 10 inch ribbon, or not ribbon, zipper, 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 zipper. And when you place it, you want to make sure that it is placed dead center between your die lines. Okay. We're going to stick the head and the metal stop way out away from the stitch path. Once I've got everything lined up, I'm going to put a little piece of tape down here to hold it in alignment correctly. I'm gonna run my fingers down to make sure that my zipper is nice and tight and straight. And I'm gonna put another piece down here just to hold the zipper loosely in place while I run the big mamajama of tape. Now that stitch line is going to go right under the zipper and right above the zipper, so you wanna leave plenty of room so that you don't sew your tape down. Now we're gonna throw this back in the machine and we will run color stop number three, which will tack down your zipper. Then we'll come back and on just before we do number four, we'll place our vinyl. Back in a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now tacked down our zipper nice and tight. 
I am going to pull up my tape because I'm gonna reuse it here in just a second. Woo! I'm gonna get rid of this tape too. Um, I'm gonna tape down my zipper head because I'm a paranoid person. I'm gonna get rid of that. Now, this is the six by 10 bag and in the PDF there's measurements for everything. But for the six by 10, you are going to need a piece of beige marine vinyl, approximately one half by nine and a half. And it's gonna go right up there. You're gonna buck it against the teeth. And you're gonna need a bottom piece that is six by nine and a half. And you're gonna come down here and you're gonna buck it against those teeth. Now, remember I said we got vinyl? Or we got tape? We're gonna tape it across the stitch line right there to hold the top and the bottom nice and tight against the teeth and relative to one another. Kind of come over here, do the same exact thing. Make sure you're laying everything down. You got it, it's all good. Now, if you're super paranoid, you can throw a little bit of tape up here. If you're hyper paranoid, you can throw a little tape down here. But unless you are uh, stitching in a wind tunnel, it's really not necessary. Now we're gonna throw this bad boy back in the machine and we will run color stop four, which will tap down that vinyl, okay, here and here. I'm gonna go ahead and let it run and do color step five, which is going to be the lower brown design. Color stop six, which is gonna be the crest. Color stop seven, which is gonna be the background for this. Color stop eight, which is going to be the detail on the wax seal. Then we'll come back and I'll show you how to attach um, a half sheet of felt to the back of the bag to hide all of this design muck on the inside of your bag. Back in just a minute. Hey, dokey pokies, we have got all of the front detail except for these uprights and we'll get to those in a minute. I'll show you why. All the front detail on this bag done. And remember earlier, we did the back, okay? So we're gonna flip this bad boy over and I like to line the inside of my bag. It's a half lining, it's not a full turn lining um, like you guys are used to. This is a little quicker, but it hides all of that stitch work on the inside of the bag. So you put a piece of felt, da -da -da, and then you find your tape. There's my tape. Um, and can I get away with a half a sheet of felt on this? I can, so I'm gonna cut this in half real quick because we always want to save as much of our stuff as we can. Okay, then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna line it up, make sure that I am covering everything from the top zipper line down, and I am. Then we're gonna throw a little tape on this bad boy to hold it in place while it does that stitch. There we go. Okay, and then we're gonna come down here and we're gonna tape the other. Yep, there we go. Are we in frame? Nope, there we are. We're gonna tape the other side. We'll throw this bad boy back in the machine and it will do a stitch to attach. All right, so we've got that piece of felt attached to the to the back. We're going to go ahead and pull our tape. And you'll notice I did not pay attention to my stitch lines very well, so I managed to sew some of my tape right into the stitch line, which kind of stinks, but it happens to all of us. So I'm just going to go ahead and come in here and try and pull it out. Luckily, it's on the um, sleevage, the seam line. So when this gets turned, it's gonna be on the inside of the bag, on the seam, so nobody's really gonna notice, but if I can get it to pull out, I'll be a much happier camper, because I'm kind of anal that way. And you don't need to watch me do that on camera, so I'll do it here in a minute when you're not watching. I'm gonna take this other piece of tape off. And I am going to trim this felt um, across 
Well, this side's pretty. This side's pretty close to the edge already. So don't want to clear, trim too close to the stitch line. I'm gonna come over here and trim this one. And then I'm gonna be a lot slower, methodical, and careful going across the top because this is a part that will show when you unzip the bag if that is all janky and jaggedy. There we go. All right. Now, we have to move our zipper head because we are about to do the zipper stop stitches. So I'm gonna take this piece of tape and I'm gonna move my zipper to about one and a half to two inches from the other end. And I'm going to tape, because we know I don't like metal around my machine, we're gonna tape that down. Also, since our machine is going to be going across this open zipper, I don't want it to catch on my vinyl, so I am going to throw a little stitch or a little tape right there. We're going to do a line here. We're going to come down to a line here so that it moves away from the zipper head and then back up here in a single stitch here, and we'll be back in a minute. Okay, folks, Hogwarts letter bag. We've done our zipper stops, okay? We're going to pull this tape up. You want to make sure that when you do pull this tape up, that you leave the single stitch in there so that it holds down your vinyl and your zipper for the next step. Okay. All right. Come over here and pull up our tape again. Sometimes I have better luck at this than other times. Um, there we go. I'm gonna pull my little tape out. Now remember, my bags are a little bit different. I tuck my ribbons under. Um, and cut out my zipper teeth on the outside of the bag so that um, there's not so much bulk and it looks more finished. So we're just going to cut along the ribbon and cut the teeth out, but leave the ribbon. Then you're going to grab your seam ripper, and mine always seems to go wandering in on vacation. I really need to put a bell on it, and we are going to carefully put a small rip in our cutaway and tuck our ribbon tails to the back. Okay. Then we're gonna rotate and we're gonna do the same thing. We'll cut the zipper teeth out to our stitch line. There we go. Gonna lift this bad boy up, cut them off, lift the whole thing up Grab your seam ripper, put a small little tear in it, tuck your tuck tail, ha ha, and run. There we go. We're gonna flip it over. Remember, ooh, I'm not in frame, there we go. Um, hey, I'm getting better at this camera thing, guys, right? Cross your tails. Grab a small piece of tape. Ooh, camera tape. Tape your tails crossed. There we go. Come over here, cross your tails. Take a small little piece of tape, tape your tails. Now, this one's gonna be a little bit different. Okay, when we run this next color stop, when we run color stop 11, instead of, like normal on my bags, this would be a bean stitch here and a bean stitch here, you're actually going to get um, probably a two millimeter satin stitch across it to carry the envelope up to the top of the bag. But because you've got this single stitch here and here, it should not catch on your vinyl at all. So I'm gonna go throw that on the hoop and run color stop 11 back in a minute. Folks, you'll notice that we did our lines up here, okay? It is now time to attach our back. Before I do that, I'm gonna flip her over. I'm gonna take these pieces of tape off and I'm gonna trim these tails as close to that stitch line as possible. And then here's the other thing that I get all busy and I forget. Remember, we're gonna to have to turn this bag. So I'm going to need to put a little bit of a cut in here to help me turn, okay? The other thing is, remember way back at the start, way back at the start, we put these D-rings in in order for them to be on the outside of the bag, once we have turned the bag, we now have to put them on the inside. So, 
I am going to cut notches, not very deep, all right, in my vinyl, okay, just like that, okay, and my stitch line will be right there, so it'll hide it. I'm going to flip my D-ring to the inside, remember, we want to tape it down, ooh, that's going to buck up against the head of that zipper. So we're going to move the zipper down a little bit. And we're going to put that right there. And tape it down and out of the way. There we go. And we're going to come down here and we're going to do, oops, you can't see. You want to see, don't you? Oops. Ooh, big hoop, small camera, big problems. Ah, bad angle. How am I going to do this? I don't know. Um, can I come over here? Yikes. Okay. You trust me, right? Yeah. Okay, we're just going to clip a little bit. Okay. Clip a little bit. Arrgh. And then we're going to come and clip a little bit. We're going to untape. Okay. And if you're going, I need a guideline for that. Um, what you need to remember is that stitch line right there, that's going to be the top of the bag. So you want to stop short of that line. Okay. Um, yeah, Ricky, that's great. That's wonderful. Why don't you put a sew line on the top? All right, you know what? I will. See, here's me making a, uh, um, a note. Add cross body loop die lines. There. So when this finally goes to release, there will be a little cutting line for you. Are you happy? All right. <laughs> so we've got our loops to the inside. We've got our zipper open. It is time for our back. And remember, haha, we have um, embroidered our back. So we want good side to good side. All right, how are we gonna line this up? Well, we're just gonna kind of eyeball and center it. Now, that leaves ugly, very much ugly, on the inside of my bag. I don't want anybody to see all that ugly. So I'm gonna tape this down, not super secure or anything, just to hold it in place. And, because I love my felt, I'm gonna float a piece of felt, and it is going to tack all of that together with a bean stitch and make it nice and sturdy. I'm gonna throw it in the machine. It's gonna do the final step. Although on your stitch sheet, it is not the final step. We're doing number 12. You will never do number 13. That's that stop line to get the head away from your D-rings or lobster claws. I'm gonna throw that in the machine back in a minute. Hey, we are all done with our bag. So we are gonna unhoop it. Woo, look at that, unhoop, okay? And now we are going to have to trim our bag. Now remember, I like to use a roto cutter. It's, it's neater, quicker, faster, and doesn't hurt my hands quite as much. So we're going to line up about one eighth to one quarter of an inch away from the stitch line, and we are gonna cut. Then, I didn't cut all the way across the stabilizer. Oh well, we're gonna turn. We're gonna line up one quarter to one eighth of an inch, just like that. And we're gonna cut. Then we're gonna line up. Do you see where this is going? All right, we're gonna do all four sides just like that. Then I am going to take, oops, I didn't cut all the way through that. I did not apply enough pressure, that's okay. Boom, fixed. Then we are going to take our scissors and we are going to clip our curves so that we have nice rounded 
edges on the inside of our bags so there's not too much bulk to worry about. Okay, we're gonna get all this crap out of the way and recenter the camera because it moved. All right, we're gonna flip it over. We're gonna have to open up this zipper hole a little bit more. So carefully run your scissors along the stitch line, but not on the stitches. This is where we wanna be neat, careful, methodical, and slow. We don't wanna clip open anything we just spent all this time sewing shut. Okay. There we go. Come up. Make sure that you're not cutting the zipper because I've done that. And we're gonna trim this last little piece right here. All right, there we go. We're gonna reach in and we're gonna pop the tape loose on that zipper head and our D-rings. And we're gonna try and move that zipper head if we can get that tape off. If we can get that tape off. There we go. Come here. There's one piece of tape. There's two pieces of tape. There's three pieces of tape. We're gonna try and move that zipper head all the way open, if it'll let us. It's not going to, but I think I can get it turned. So I reach, I put a finger in the corner and push up with the finger and pull with the thumb. Oh, come here, baby. There you go. All right. There we go. There we go. Now you got to come up to the top and do the same. Push out with your thumb. If uh, your thumb's not strong, then remember you can get some sort of pokey thing, but you want it to be rounded and not sharp. Pokey, pokey, pokey. Come over here. I got your poke right there. Come down here. Jab stab more 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 Ooh, that one didn't get turned hardly at all did it so there's a lot of jabby pokey going on there there you go there you go there you go there you go we're gonna zip her up we're gonna roll our seams Remember that top scene's not gonna wanna lay flat for you very well. So again, if you take, oh, if you take something nice and flat and then stack some books on it overnight, it'll flatten down. All right guys, there is our six by 10 Hogwarts letter bag, complete with a dress on the back and it's set up for crossbody. All right, guys, that's it. Go sew.